I think I'm gonna cook that conger eel tonight. Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Tonight I am going to be cooking the conger eel that I shot in my last video. You can check that video out right here, but for those who are too lazy to click that link, I'm just gonna show you the footage of me shooting that conger eel right now. It's a nice fish, probably around five, five, six, six kilos. So um, yeah, Joe reckons it was pretty good. So I'm gonna try and cook it up myself and pour back with the results. So the timing of this video is a little off. The next part of me cutting this eel up into steaks was shot after I obviously shot the fish and now it's a month later, but this is me cutting up the fish. So I've gutted this conger eel and I've got the main part of the carcass out. Make sure you get all the bloodlines out and all the guts. You don't want any of that in your food. And the meat actually looks pretty good from what I can see so far. The best place to cut steaks up is between the vertebrae because it's a soft cartilage between. And you can just generally stick your knife in, down like this, cutting along through. So that's the nice steak we have there. You can see the small cartilage soft area between the vertebrae in there. And uh, yeah, that'll cook up nicely. We'll freeze this for now and do something with it a bit later. So when I was in Italy, Giuliano cooked up our groper in a chickpea tomato based stew type thing that was sensational. So I've looked up a few recipes online, modified it to my own needs. And this is what you will need for that recipe. A lemon, an onion, a capsicum, cherry tomatoes, a sprig of rosemary, chickpeas, and of course, conger eel steaks. After all that, I forgot to put the garlic in my little animation there, so you'll need one of these as well. Essential cooking item garlic. It's a little Gordon Ramsay trick that I learned off YouTube. Ah, damn it, the freaking onions in the eyes. But um, yeah, that's how you dice an onion really quickly. I've browned the onion and garlic a little bit here. Gonna add the capsicum and the tomatoes next. So I'm just mixing up the tomatoes, the garlic, the onion, and the capsicum together, just trying to soften these down in the frying pan. And then I'm going to add the juice from the chickpeas into this mix to try and make a bit of a stewy broth. Uh, in Italy, they did it with dried chickpeas and used the water that came from that into the pot. I'm using canned chickpeas, probably not gonna be as nice, but we'll see how it goes. This is softened down really nicely. I'm gonna add the juice from the chickpeas to this and stew that together. It's gonna to make a bit of a thicker stew, hopefully. Better add the rosemary sprig. So these are the cutlets from the conger eel that I cut up. I've taken the skin off these because the skin was quite thick and tough and slimy. I don't really mind scaly fish when I'm eating skin, but it just didn't really fit with this one. I'm gonna try it without first, just to really just taste the meat and maybe not be influenced by the taste of the skin. But I'm going to cook these just a little bit on each side, fry them first in a fry pan before I add them to the stew, just to crisp them up a bit because I don't really wanna just poach the fish. I kinda of wanna cook it and have a bit of the sauce on top with the stew. Just before I cook this fish, I'm just gonna add the chickpeas to this mix here. To give the pan a bit of a shake when you just put it in there, it stops it sticking to the bottom. 
because I've got a crappy pan. So I'm not gonna lie, the conger eel smells a bit conger eel-ish. I can only describe it as a bit in the fishy, slimy, stinky. So not that appealing right now, but hopefully, once we put it into the sauce, it'll taste good. Because there are some fish that smell a bit when you cook them, like sharky mackerel, they smell a bit like iodine, but when you eat them, they taste fine. So hopefully it's just a bit pungent. And on that note, you may be asking, why did you shoot a conger eel and eat it if you knew it was gonna be a bit smelly? Well, I'm a firm believer in there are no bad fish, there are only bad chefs. So, yeah, I'm gonna give it a go. Maybe I'll be a bad chef. Looks pretty cooked through there, so. Might get this bad boy on a plate. Right, give it a squeeze of lemon. All right, so to be honest, I'm not really confident that this is going to be sensational, but if you kill it, you should try it at least once. Wow, the texture is a little chewy. Kind of tastes a little bit like chicken. It's um, it's pretty chewy, but there's not really any fishy flavor or anything that I was expecting from when I was cooking it. Try it with a little bit of the chickpeas. Mm. Sorry, bones. People did warn me that these things have a lot of bones in them. So as far as eating qualities go, it actually tastes pretty good. Uh, it's not fishy, it's a little bit chewy, a little bit like chicken. Probably overcooked it a little bit. Chickpeas and tomato stuff obviously tastes fine. Um, got a lot of bones in it. Probably wouldn't rush out and shoot another one, but at least I am now educated and informed that if anyone says conger eels are inedible, they are not. You can definitely eat them. Fine to eat, just a bit of work. That's it for this video, guys. Before I tuck into the rest of my dinner, I just wanna say a big thanks to everyone out there supporting the channel, liking the videos, commenting. I read all the comments. I may not get to respond to all of them because there's just so many of them, but really appreciate the support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.